So now it's finally time to move from static fluids to fluids that are flowing. Basically like water falling from say a tap or water flowing down a waterfall or in a river. Basically fluids that are in motion. Other examples being the swirling smoke from a fire, etc. Believe it or not, there are still many unanswered questions about flowing fluids. And science is still uncovering the mysteries behind these turbulent questions. So let's begin. So we represent fluids that are flowing using streamlines. Streamlines are just a theoretical construction. Something like magnetic field lines, for example. They are actually defined as a curve whose tangent at any point is in the direction of fluid velocity at that point. Now, that might be a little tough to understand immediately. So, let's just take an example. Take a pipe with a static fluid and let's visualize the balls that, are, that this fluid is made up of. Now, if someone say, applies a force this side, now these balls are going to start moving together, right? So, let's say they move in this direction and also, let's assume that all these balls are moving obediently, like say, students in a march past and not randomly, and not... So basically, we assume that these balls don't cross each other's paths. In this kind of flow, if I draw a line like this, which basically traces the path of one ball, and if I mark two points on this line, then every particle that reaches this point will come to this point. Basically, a particle that reaches point A will come to point B. And the velocity that any particle has when it reaches this particular point will always be the same. Now, take some time to digest that. I'm not saying that the velocity of every particle will be constant. In fact, it can keep changing. But if I keep concentrating on this point, every time a particle reaches that point, it will have the same velocity. Now, this type of flow is called steady flow. And these lines, which are always tangential to the velocity of the particles, are called streamlines. Now, this is a very ideal type of flow and does not happen very often in daily life. But it's just easy for us to analyze. And this type of flow, where all the balls go crazy and start crossing each other's paths, is called turbulent flow. But in our study, we will be dealing only with incompressible fluids that are undergoing steady flow. So let's bring back the pipe and of course assume that it has an incompressible fluid that's undergoing steady flow. Now if I took two points, let's say over here and here, the question is what would be the relationship for their speed? Say if I assume the speed here is v1 and the speed here is v2, what would this v1 and v2 depend upon? For that, let's do something extremely simple. Let's conserve mass, okay? But before that, say assume, say, assume you have a pipe and which is filled with the fluid and I add X grams of some fluid on one side, how much will flow out on the other side? Simple, right? Obviously, X gram. And because they are incompressible, because the fluid is incompressible, if I add, the volume will also be the same. So if X grams uh, amounts to a few liters, or let's say X liters, then the same amount of liters will come out as well. So similarly, if I take a volume of a fluid in a container and push it like this for a time dt, very small time dt, the volume that is lost on this side will be the same, right? Should be equal to the volume that is gained on the other side, right? So if at this point, the area of cross-section, let's say, is A1 and the speed as I push is V1, and at this point, the area of cross-section is A2 and the speed is V2, then the volume lost over here will be A1 into this distance, right? Let's call it some distance. And that distance would be V1 into dt, right? Speed into time. So because dt is extremely small, we can assume that the area doesn't change within that small distance. So similarly, so finally, the volume would be A1 V1 dt. Now, if we come to the other side, the volume gain will be 
again a2 into this distance which is a2 into v2 into dt so by conservation of mass we know that the volume will be the same so therefore a1 v1 dt should be equal to a2 v2 dt okay that means if i cancel out dt on both sides i get a1 v1 equals a2 v2 now because i took two random points this proves that if an incompressible fluid is undergoing steady flow then the product of the area of cross section and the speed will be the same for any two random points and this is called the equation of continuity and this product av is equal to what it is basically equal to the area into so if you consider this section it's area into distance traveled by time taken now area into that distance is nothing but the volume so av is nothing but the change in volume by time taken right so you can say that av is nothing but dv or d capital v by dt where capital v is basically the volume so this basically means that the product of the area of cross section and the speed at a point is also equal to the change in volume by time taken okay so now finally you should be able to explain something that you would have noticed if you ever played with a garden hose so if you remember what happens is when you squeeze the mouth of the garden hose the water that's coming out sort of speeds up right now think about it and try to explain that using what you just learned for more videos and live lectures on the jee click on the subscribe button now